Hello everyone, welcome back to ECMATH. We are today going to talk about the vector angle formula. Uh, so a couple things. One, this should not be your first video you watch on vectors. Uh, I'd recommend if you if you don't know what vectors are, some of their basic terms like uh, magnitude, for example, you're going to need to know. Uh, and, and or you haven't looked at how to compute the dot product, and this is not the video for you. I'd go back and uh, look at some other videos first and then come back here. Um, today we're going to talk about the vector angle formula, and the formula is given uh, in the following way. There's two ways you sometimes see it. The first one uh, is cosine theta is equal to vector u dotted with vector v divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. That's the general formula. Here's another way you sometimes see it. Magnitude of u magnitude of v cosine theta is equal to vector u dotted with vector v. And these really mean the same things. It's just cross multiplying that term to over there. Um, but it kind of depends which thing you want to be solving for. Uh, this one's probably useful if you want to find theta. This thing's more useful if you want to find u dot v. Um, and so, you know, like whichever, they're, they're kind of equally useful. So let's say, uh, let's tr test out the formula. So say I have these two vectors here, u is 3, 4, and v is negative 2, 0. Uh, first thing I would do is take a second and draw them out. You don't really need to draw them out, but I think it's helpful. And then the angle between them that we're going to find is the angle that's kind of the acute angle right here. And I can tell from the picture that this angle is going to be bigger than 90. Um, and, you know, I chose this example probably because you don't need, need, need a formula for doing this. You could probably find the angle uh, inside here and then, you know, do some other work and just use normal geometry. But I want to see what the formula says. So I need to compute u dot v. which is 3 times minus 2 plus 4 times 0. It's really nice that that's a 0 there because this comes out to just minus 6. I also need to know the magnitude of vector u, which I can find by doing the square root of its components squared. I know that that's going to be 25, so this is 5. And I need to know the magnitude of vector v. I can do the square root of the component squared, or I can just look at the vector and notice that it's horizontal, so the magnitude of vector v is just going to be positive 2. All right, so the formula for this vector then is the angle cos theta is equal to u dot v, negative 6, divided by magnitude of u, 5, times magnitude of v, 2. So negative 6 over 10, or negative uh, 3 over 5. Now to find the actual angle, I need to do cosine inverse of negative 3 over 5. Let's get our calculator. Um, I'm going to put this in degrees. You can do this, of course, in radians or degrees. doesn't matter. Just make sure you know what mode you're in. Uh, about 126.86, uh, I'm going to say, point eight seven zero uh, degrees. We'll say degrees here. Which seems like it sort of matches the picture. So that's the, the first kind of base case of using this formula. You find the three things you need. One, two, three. You plug them into the formula. You do an inverse trig. You get your angle. Let's do another example. Uh, I'm trying to, to kind of just show this off. Now I've picked really similar numbers so we can just use the same numbers. Um, so magnitude of u is actually the same. That's going to be 5. Magnitude of v, that's going to be 2 just because of the component and the 0. Uh, u dot v is going to be 3 times 2 plus 4 times 0 or 6. So I know that cosine of theta is going to be 6 over 5 times 2, uh, which is 6 over 10, or 3 over 5. So really similar to the last problem. So to find the angle, uh, we'll say that theta 
will be cosine inverse of 3 over 5. I'm just going to take this and delete the minus sign. Well, 53.130. Oh. Um, now, that shouldn't surprise you if you compare it to our previous answer because we were just finding the angle opposite uh, to the angle we found in problem one. But uh, it was just another example of how I like to use the formula. And now I want to use the formula one more time. So I've drawn out u and v. Um, now, notice that this is not actually to scale. I kind of just drew them straight through each quadrant. So don't trust the picture. Um, it does kind of look like maybe there's an interesting angle relationship between them. But let's see what the formula says. Uh, don't trust your eyes. Don't trust your picture. So u dot v is 3 times minus 8 plus 4 times 6. So that's negative 24 plus 24, or 0. Uh, now, once I arrive at 0, I could actually start to set up the formula. So um, I need to do u dot v over magnitude of u magnitude of v. Well, that's going to be 0 divided by a bunch of stuff, which is just going to be 0. So the formula would say cosine of theta equals 0. That's a little weird. Um, now go ahead and figure out magnitude of u and magnitude of v. Magnitude of u would be 5, and magnitude of v would be uh, the square root of 64 plus 36, which is 100. So this would actually be just 10. It's a 6, 8, 10 triangle. So really the number on here is 50, but it doesn't matter what that number was. I know that cosine theta is 0. So I need to know the cosine inverse of 0. Now, you could go to your calculator, of course. But remember, this is asking, what's theta if cosine theta equals 0? Well, there's one angle since cosine theta is x. Then theta has to be 90 degrees. Remember your unit circle, guys. So theta is 90 degrees. And that is a really interesting relationship that's actually really important. So here's the uh, three answers kind of grouped together. And notice that I had three situations. When I had a negative input, I had an angle greater than 90 as the angle between the vectors. When I had a zero input, I had an exactly 90 degree angle. And when my input was, when my input was positive, I had an acute angle between the vectors. Now that relates to how cosine inverse works. Remember that cosine inverse is defined in these two quadrants and always gives you answers uh, for positive and then negative cosine. So that sort of makes sense if you think back to where cosine inverse is defined and what it means. Um, let's also think about what made each of these inside positive or negative. Each of these is coming from a u dot v over a magnitude of u times a magnitude of v. Draw that over here. Well, magnitudes are always positive. So the thing that controls the sign of the argument here, which then is what controls whether your angle is bigger or smaller than 90 is just the dot product. And that leads us to a really interesting conclusion. If u dot v is greater than 0, that is, it's positive, then the angle between the vectors, theta, is acute. If u dot v is less than 0, then theta is obtuse. And most importantly, if u dot v is exactly equal to 0, then you're always going to be doing cosine inverse of 0, and theta will exactly equal 
90 degrees. Those are really useful facts about vectors. Specifically, this last one shows up all the time, and here's an example of a problem that might use it. So say I have a vector 2, uh, comma minus 5, find v such that u is perpendicular to v. Now, obviously, one way I could do this is to like sketch out the vector, find its slope, try to draw another vector, but I don't need to. u is 2, 5. I'm going to let v uh, be vector x, comma y. You can pick any letters you want then u dot v will equal 2x minus 5y. And if u is going to be perpendicular to v, then u dot v must equal 0. So I'm going to take 2x minus 5y and set it equal to 0, and then I'm just going to guess and check some u's and v's. Uh, let's see, how about 2 times 4, which would be 8, minus 5. Now that's actually hard. I want to be a little more strategic than that. I'm right, because we want to guess and check in an organized way. So I need some things that are going to maybe cancel out. Could I get both of these terms to be 20? Could I have 2 times 10 minus 5 times 4? That seems like it would work. So one vector... Uh, v, in this case, is 10, 4. Now, could I also uh, take that vector v and scale it up? Make it 20, 8? Absolutely. Uh, these are going to do the same thing. 2 times 20 would be 40, and 5 times 8 is 40, and so those we cancel out too. Uh, could you do something else? Sure. Could I have negatives in here? Yeah. But negative 5, so 2 times negative 5 would be negative 10, so I would need uh, 5y to also be negative 10, so let's do minus 5 times uh, negative 2, then this will be negative 10 minus minus 10, which would be 0, so another v3 would be negative 5 comma negative 2. So when I say find v, there's infinitely many such v's. But what you might notice is that all of these v's are scalar multiples of each other, um, positive or negative. So 10, 4, uh, if I divide that by, two, by negative 2, I get negative 5, 2. If I take this and times it by positive, by negative 4, I get 20, 8. Um, you could immediately say, all right, how about a v4 that would also work would be uh, negative 1, comma, negative 2 fifths. Just dividing everything by 5, scaling it up and down. So once you find one vector, you can find infinitely many such vectors, because geometrically what you're doing is this. Here's u. Here's one of your v's. And then any scalar multiple is going to be in the same direction or opposite direction, but they'll preserve that perpendicularity. And so that's how you solve a problem like this, where you're looking for uh, a second vector to make two things perpendicular. A whole lot easier than doing slope. And actually, um, you can prove the idea that slope is opposite reciprocal. You can prove it using this vector idea probably pretty easily. All right, team, so that's the vector angle formula. That's all I really wanted to talk about today. Uh, it's a really interesting use of the dot product, probably the most important, most common use of dot product, which is just to tell you uh, how two vectors are related and um, you know how you can calculate that angle, angle exactly. Now, if you want to see a proof of this formula, check out the next video in the series. But I'm going to cut it here. Uh, say goodbye to all y'all. Um, goodbye. And I'll see you next time.